Red Edition, welcome. Happy day, mothers. Mothers are kind of cool. Everybody should have one. Huh? And I'm sure happy that I've still got mine. She's 86 years old and she doesn't know it. We haven't told her yet. Hi, mom. <laughs> now you know, hey. I stayed at my mom's house just the other night and it's always an experience for me. She takes me back to my childhood. Uh, this trip, she made lazy daisy cake for me and I ate pounds of it. You can tell, hey, I knew it would look good on me. And a visit before that, I had uh, tomato soup cake. Sounds a little awful, doesn't it? But it's great. Right. and it really has tomato soup in it, just sharing. But anyway, we watched a movie together on our television set. It was one of these DVD thingamadoos, and it was about Winston Churchill, and I think it was called The Winds of Change, or The, I don't know, Winds of War. I'm not good with names, I, I, I can't remember the title, but it was all about the war. I, before it happened. At the end of the war, or at the end of the movie rather, war had been declared. And mom was telling me some things about World War II, and, and in particular we're talking about gas rations because you only were allowed to use so much gasoline in your tanks back in the late 30s and early 40s, and farmers had to put their names on their trucks and their cars so you could see where they were from, and if they were too far from home, well then of course you knew that they were over and above their rationing of, you know, for gasoline. I thought that was pretty interesting. I wanted to share that with you a pretty long story but hey i mean maybe now when you see some sign uh, on a truck and it says frank's apple farm or something and now you know why they have stuff like that how do i do with all of that ramble lap dances we go from mothers and world war to lap dances are you still with me and are they a form of theater in philadelphia they have gentlemen clubs there and they're contending, or the clubs are at least, that uh, you can't tax a city, you can't uh, tax us because uh, this is theater, and, <laughs> and how dare you. And uh, the city's tax review board now is trying to make this decision, and it's been quite an interesting and ongoing war, and uh, this is a, a legitimate contemporary American theater, so says the club, and the tax people say, I don't think so, you got strippers there, you got all this kind of stuff, pay me, pay, 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 and they say we're not going to pay and the clubs uh, do pay an amusement tax and the entrance fee charged to customers and the city says at least give us that an amusement tax who would have darn thunk it all right we got a little story here from the stupid criminal file and this happened in LA and a robbery suspect just couldn't control himself during a lineup he just couldn't get over himself I guess a detective asked each man in the lineup to repeat the words give me all your money or I'll shoot and the man, when it came to his turn, he shouted, that's not what I said. <laughs> okay, they do walk among us. That's probably a good thing. Now, Canada is pretty wary of the UN Arms Treaty, despite the U.S. approval. I guess they all should be. 108 countries now have signed the treaty, and the goal is to halt uh, destabilization, uh, the destabilization flow of arms into the uh, global conflict regions, and so many people think that it's actually a conspiracy. There's much more going on than this, and I agree with that. I mean, global stuff. I mean, what are you guys doing? I mean, if you're in China and you want to fool around and talk about doing certain things, do it there. Don't try to include me in it, and that's what they're doing in the U.S. The theory is, at least, that Okami's trying to sign up so one day he can use that as a form of gun control or even confiscation, and that could well be. In Canada, you have the Prime Minister there and talking to the U.N., and he says things like this, let's intensify efforts to help the world's most vulnerable, and he goes on to say that we have to save lives from preventable death from preventable death. And here's a guy that his country or in his country is totally against the law to defend yourself with a weapon, including your hands, an ax, or even a dog. If somebody attacks you in your own home and you have a dog and say, second bullet and bullet does and saves your life but takes a man's life, you, not the dog, will be charged for criminal neglect, probably manslaughter, and you'll go to jail. How do you like that? Here you got a prime minister wandering around the world saying, hey, hey, come on, let's save lives. How about saving all the tax taxpayers at home. Can you imagine having to beg and, and look, beg somebody to, to change a law to make it so you can protect yourself? And he calls himself a conservative. He makes me kind of mad. Just sharing. Okay, I got more stories for you. <laughs> I got to cool down. <laughs> there, cool down now. Let me end today. I, don't, I was going to get into another gun store, but I'll save that for you tomorrow, so make sure you all come back. An Irishman 
he had a little too much to drink one night. He's driving home and his car is weaving and, you know, he's just all over the road. And finally a policeman pulls him over and says, so, where have you been? Well, I've been to the pub, of course, says the drunk. Well, it looks like you've had quite a few to drink this evening. I did okay, so said the drunk. And did you know that a few intersections back your wife fell out of the car? <laughs> Thank heavens, sighed the drunk. For a minute there, I thought I'd gone deaf. <laughs> Welcome, Meg. We're going to more for you from the right. See ya.